Wow. I mean, you, you look at where you started in George Horton, Dave Snow, mm -hmm. Augie Garrido. I mean, three of the most iconic, I think, coaches on the West Coast that have come out and taught college baseball at the foundation, you know, with taking these elite athletes. I, uh, Dave Snow and I, we, we ran around together when I was scouting with the Rockies. He recruited mm -hmm. me in high school. All three of those guys did. Um, just amazing, like, foundation to be able to – and then Tom Kelly, and then you played with Hurdle and all these guys. So, you know, you take today's player – that is, you know, like my son, Dylan, um, you know, aspiring athlete, he's going to his junior year, you got all this pressure on showcases and, you know, being a show pony and make sure that your raw velocity numbers are up and your exit velo is up and your launch angles are correct. But like Mike was saying, there's not a lot of time for gameplay mm -hmm. or practice to then play hard. And we, we had Denny Hawking on last week. And Denny was talking about how the guys that are so routine driven right now, the Harpers, uh, the Pujolses, the Trouts, those guys are doing okay at the big league level um, in all this COVID stuff, no fans in the stands, but their routine is what has gotten them to where they are and is, is you know, putting that, keeping them in the light. What's your advice to young athletes uh, right now, you know, in high school, some, you know, are, may play fall ball, may not, um, you know, how do they find that routine? Because we talk about have a routine, but what is that routine at that young level, uh, you know, for these aspiring college pro, pro players? Well, first of all, you know, I know the game has changed, you know, from when I played, and, and I know there's all these different activities going on. I, I wish we would play more games. Unfortunately, you know, I think the games are the best teacher for the most part. But I think, you know, everybody, if you, let, let's say the physical part of the swing. I'm leery that there's too much cloning with these kids. I think everybody's a little different. I think everybody has a little matter of style, you know, how they approach it. And then the job is to find out where they're at in those in what works for him to benefit him. I don't think everybody needs there. There's guys that like T work. There's guys that like certain drills. There's got, I'm a big fan of the machine. I wish everybody would use machines. Um, I, I just believe the, the, the more you can use velocity, the better, you know, I, I think even in little leagues and stuff, you know, just use the machine as much as possible. Um, because I think that's where you, you find the swing more. The kid finds his ability to use his swing properly is using machines. I, I really do. I, we started probably five years ago. Uh, Mike, I know it wasn't big when we played in the 80s. But lately, I, we use them all the time. And I think the development of a hitter professionally has improved because of using the machine. Yeah. I really do. We have our drill work, mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever that, you know, cross toss, uh, high T, wh whatever those drills are, short bat, mm -hmm. bat path drills, how to get on plane. We have all that. You know, we have a tire drill for bat. We got all sorts of stuff. But it goes back to being able to hit the fastball. And I think if kids and their travel teams focus more on hitting number one, they will improve their swing and will be able to adjust to number two. Mm -hmm. I that. think if more travel teams and all those high schools focus on working and disciplining a kid in his approach on how to hit the fastball, he'll be in more consistent position to hit. I really believe that. 